Hey beautiful people, my name is Tim Lee and welcome to Draw Too Much, another one of my critiques of one of my students. Before we get started on this though, there's a couple things I want to tell you. Um, the technique that I'm going to be demonstrating here in this to kind of help solve some problems is not an original technique of mine. This actually comes from Court Jones from Proko. Now, Court Jones is an amazing caricature artist. He's been in the business forever. I haven't gotten to meet him personally, but he is an awesome guy. I've seen his work. I've seen his videos. He's incredible. And he's worked with Proko uh, and created some absolutely amazing stuff. Link is going to be in the description below for some of his abstract sketch advice and he gives amazing advice uh, their courses their classes on caricature are the best no one's going to want to join my classes because their classes rock i've taken them they're excellent uh really seriously they're fantastic so don't be afraid to go and check all that stuff out another area to 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 look at if you want to expand your caricature horizons my stuff that i do my classes are much more of a mentorship i want to be there for each one of my students i want to offer critique and advice to each one of my students i want to be very one-on-one -on -one with each of my students that's where mine's different than theirs but their classes phew, excellent stuff and we're going to be talking about a technique that court jones taught in a bunch of his videos like i said links are going to be down below now let's go ahead and hop over here into this and actually take a look at the artwork itself now this is not a caricature this is much more i mean it's caricaturized but this is much more a a technical review technical bit of advice uh how can we improve on this technically now <clears throat> in saying this I was going to offer a bunch of great advice, but here's the benefit of my Discord community and all of our students who support each other. Um, everyone's giving amazing advice. Everyone's not only giving advice, but giving tons of enthusiastic um, encouragement. That's the biggest deal about our community is no one is out to get anyone else. If they are, I'm going to boot them from everything we're doing. But the people who are in there and staying friends and staying helpful and calling it a community and building all that, that's amazing. So they all went and they offered this guy, uh, Crane Kick, a ton of amazing advice. And he went and did all the fixes that I was going to begin making suggestions on because that's what the community does <laughs> and they did a great job so in saying that they've made some changes that i want to offer as well but we're going to go back to the original previous before this change artwork uh and show you a couple of the things that i would do that they obviously did do to fix it and get it to this way but i want to show you how this technique is going to help and this is the abstract uh sketch technique that's taught by court jones from proco Okay, and in saying that, there's also some other little things that I want to mention here in this artwork uh, that are going to be really key as well uh, that I think will definitely help um, build this up a little bit at a time. Like I said, it's not a caricature. It's obviously a very exaggerated character, but it's not exactly a caricature where we're trying to get a likeness of any one person. I don't know if he had that. I think he's more concerned about the overall technical improvement on the artwork and how to bring it to life a little bit more. And I think, I think there's a couple little ways I can assist in that. Okay. Once again, longer video, most likely a longer video because there are a couple things we should talk about here to help build this up a little better. First off, let's talk about this abstract theory. Links are going to be in the description below to go to Proco and go to Court Jones videos on abstractness. And then, of course, go and check out their courses, which are fantastic, where they teach that in more detail. Um, uh, but let's go ahead now and just start with a sketch. And I'm, I'm just going to sketch over it and try and get a feel for it. And hopefully you'll get some of the techniques that I'm going to be doing here. So... Uh, first off here, it might help if I actually grab my right tools here. Here we go. Okay. Go ahead and turn my brush down here just a little bit. Make it the right size. And the first thing I'm going to do is let's go ahead and paint in a uh, white background. I'm just going to fill in white here. And we'll drop it there and drop my opacity here. So what I'm doing here first is I'm just creating a, a what I would call... Um, a front shield of the face okay and the front shield of the face will kind of include where the front of the face is and which way it's pointing kind of like that and then the rest of this back here is going to be all part of just the back of the head and some of the other little details that we're going to figure out here over time okay now with that in mind this will help me place the eyes the nose the mouth down to the chin, okay? 
Uh, now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that some of these things are symmetrically correct. Uh, and the best way to do that is to create this abstract design taught by, taught by Quart. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start with one side, and I'm going to go to the other. And the goal is to shape it to follow the same way on both sides. Now we're looking at this at an angle, so you have to draw it at the angle, but you can you can build this structure and go off of it that way. Same thing with the nose here. Um, so the nose is going to come out and then swing back up here like that. Okay, and that's fine, but what we need to do is we need to see that it's roughly balanced. So I'm just kind of working on forms here at the moment. Okay, with the muzzle, the muzzle's going to come around kind of like this, and the muzzle's going to go back behind there, so kind of like that. Maybe, maybe it might be right about there. Okay, and then finally, um, eyebrows are sitting way above, so I'll go ahead and I'll draw a line above those for the eyebrows, just for now. All right, and then this is going to be for the form of the side of the head. Okay, the ear is going to come off the chin, so ear is pretty well placed. And you would do that on both sides if there was another side to worry about. At this point in time, there isn't. Okay, and then I would develop the neck off of this front structure. Okay. And we'll give that. So what we're doing here is we're just trying to feel out where things are supposed to be. I think that as I've already created some of these lines, some things are definitely already going to be kind of off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the opacity on the background layer just a little bit more. I still want to see the original art, but I also want to be able to use these guidelines to kind of help me redevelop what this should have been, uh, maybe what the new form should be. So, and, and you can still go big with the eyes. You can still make all, it all just as expressive, but it, things are going to change now a little bit. So if I start drawing here, and I draw my first eye over here, okay, and then I need to make sure that it's roughly the same size on the other side, but a little bit smaller to make sure that we're fitting the same form, unless we're purposely trying to close down one eye more than the other. We can do that. And then also, I need to make sure if, I, if I'm if i doing this much, I should probably have a tear duct on both of these and make sure they kind of fall on the same plane as well. Now, I feel like it's already off a little bit. I feel like I'm already slightly off, but I'm still within my margins here. So I'm going to keep going with this, but I do feel like I've already made a mistake on my own part here. But I'm going to go ahead and keep building on this for the moment. Okay. Uh, for the eyebrows, let me go ahead and turn off my layers here to make sure I'm understanding what he's got with the eyebrows. The eyebrows feel just a little out of place in the original art. I feel like they should be um, working off of the nose. So let's go back to our initial... Well, let me do this here real quick. What I want to do is I want to be able to have multiple colors that I can utilize through this. So let me get that one. Uh, let's go ahead and bring this opacity back up. I'm going to grab the hottest red part of this one and color it in here. Okay, there we go. Um, so that way I don't mess up my colors. Okay, so we're back here to this original sketch. Let's go ahead and make a few more extra little additions here to kind of help. One is going to be this flowing line that's going to go for the um, eyebrow. And same this way. And, and like I said, if you do it on one side, you have to make, su make sure it is symmetrically accurate on the opposite side. So I'm going to adjust it until I feel like I'm getting symmetrical on both sides. Okay. And I feel like I'm getting there, but at the same time I'm making a mess while I'm doing it. Let me go ahead and erase this. And this one, I think. Yeah. There we go. So we've, we're starting to create this symmetry now. It's not going to be a match because I feel like one eye is a little lower and one eye is a little higher. So I think that's going to change things up slightly. But this, this structuring, I think, already gives us a bit more of a clue that I think he actually saw in his other piece. If I uh, turn off the layer 
Uh, it's a different size, but if I turn off the layer, I feel like he's added more to it as he should have. But let's keep working off of the other design that I got here uh, already from him. So I'm going to drop the opacity on this again. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So uh, another thing to keep in mind will be that there are bags under the eyes of this character. Um, pretty heavy ones too. So we're going to have to work on those in a few seconds as well. But let's go ahead and keep developing out this character. Uh, if we're putting the eye eyebrows in close, they're still going to have to be unless... It depends on how you're building the bridge. It depends on how far out you're building this part of the eyebrow. If you're building out that part of the eyebrow, once again, let's get a new layer here, then you're going to develop in your, uh, in your, and this is the way I would do it, uh, in your, in your um, abstract sketch, you'll build that into your abstract sketch. If you want to build a furrow coming out, then you're going to bring out that part of the face, which obviously we do have that going on here. So we'll go ahead and develop that out. So we're going to say that this is going to come outward while still following the line symmetrically on both sides as it goes over the, the plate. Now that then means that we can develop out this part, kind of like that, following that curve. And then with this one, we're going to have to do the same thing. Challenging part is you're going to kind of have to feel this part out. Okay. So what we've done is we've made a ridge, like like a like a overhang. Okay, and right here is going to be where that nose will develop out. So we've created this form on both sides, and this form is going to have to contort back to the original forehead. So if you wanted to, you could develop that out like that. Okay. Now on doing that, our eyebrow is going to go on here which means the eyebrow is going to be lifted. If you want it lower, then you got to put that whole brow line lower, but we're matching it with the brow line on the opposite side, which means we have to redevelop the other side as well. This is if we're trying to do things symmetrically. Things are going to be a little different without, but for right now, because this abstract design is such, uh, this abstract sketching can be technical at first to start off, I want to kind of just start building that form to see if we can create this properly. And if it'll help, maybe adding some shading in here just to kind of develop that out will be helpful too. But like I said, go check out the Proco videos. Go check out the Proco videos. Go check out the Proco videos. They deserve all the credit for this. This is something I learned from them, and I've developed in a different way for myself. So in this nostril idea here, we can develop where the center of the nose is. We can develop where the outer point of the nose is. But we're really basing it off of more shape uh, and form, uh, off of 3D shape and form, than we are just sketching it out and then coloring it in to look 3D. We're forcing our brain to think much more analytically on this process. And everything has to come back to this center line. And if there's anything that's coming out or in, that center line needs to show in that final bit there. So we got this coming down here. We got it coming down here. We got it coming down through here. Okay. And then you can develop out the nose off of that and the nostril off of that. And you would have to do the same thing on the other side if it was visible. Uh, it doesn't look like it is in this case. And then right here is going to be where your nose will connect back to the face. So check on the other side and make sure if that's visible or not. Okay, now we come down to the lips. I usually look at the center point. A lot of us have that central bump right in the center. And I can develop that out here. It looks like he put it on his design. So we can develop that out. And then from there, then you can start building the lips off on that. And then depending on how high you make those lips, you want to raise this point up. But once again, the, the original th trick that we're trying to do here, the, the thing that's really going to help this out is making sure that it always comes back to that central point when it's touching the face. From here, you can start developing out your lips. Now, in the area that we drew the muzzle which I talk about a lot about the muzzle in my personal classes, um, we need to draw an area here where the muzzle always has a little bit of distance on both sides before the mouth connects to it. OK, 
Okay. So we got our central point for the lips. And then you can literally just draw out where that is going to go. Kind of like that. Then you can start developing the lip off the top of that, connecting to the last region of the lip, depending on how big you want to go. If you want to over-exaggerate it, over-exaggerate it. But once again, we're trying to follow this abstraction. And maybe you want to do the same thing with the nose where you want to bring out the lip a little bit more. So you're lifting it off of the central point, so you want to draw the lip coming out like that. So what you're doing is you're taking this line and you're warping it out and then you're going to warp it back in. You can do that and then develop your, your new line off of this new shape. So we'll go ahead and do that here just for the sake of showing how that's done. Uh, at least in this style. And once again, my style is a little different from the Proco techniques. Uh, this is just something that I found was helpful. If I, if I was really struggling with drawing a face but I really wanted to push the geometric shapes of the face, this is the way I'm doing it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna build out the bottom lip now too. Okay, and once again, coming off of that central line, going back into it, now I can develop the bottom lip as much as I want, as long as by the time I get back to it, it comes back to that central point. Now if you wanna develop the chin off of this and take it even lower or whatever, that's perfectly fine. Just what you got to do is you got to think about how that's going to come off that central uh, that central post, and we can keep bringing that down as much as we want to develop out the rest of the chin. I'm going to go ahead and bring the chin down just to continue to to follow the same style that we got going on here. For right now, we'll go here. I'm going to go ahead and take it back to where he has his jaw for now, just because. And then what you're going to do, obviously, is off the central point then, that's going to be the new base of the chin there. Okay. But we, as you can see, we still have some shield showing on this side. So that means that there's still face on this side. What we choose to do on one side of the face, we do off the other, right? So that means that when you decide that you're going to develop out a cheek, uh, like he did. And I'm going to go ahead and exaggerate the, out, the, the push of that cheek to show how you're going to do it on both sides. So let's say you want to develop out this cheek form here, okay? Well, you can literally follow that through all the way through the face and develop it out the other way here. And the goal is to make it look as uniform on one side as you will on the other. Okay, and once you've done that, then you want to think about how that cheek is going to affect the, the, the bag under the eye or the laugh lines uh, around the face. So make sure you follow through with those and try to get as close to those as you can, and then redevelop the cheek so that it's adding to that weight, adding to that effect as much as possible, okay? Once you've done that, then you can connect the cheek back to the, the what I'm calling, once again, what I'm calling the shield of the face, and we can connect that shield right back to it. And then you're back, you're back into square one. Now, this artist really likes using lines, uh, a lot of lines. Uh, to a, I'm going to say to a fault. He uses a lot of lines, which makes a lot of age to characters. I'm going to go ahead and utilize those lines as well because I want to demonstrate the age that's going to happen. But uh, here on out, I'm probably just going to kind of sketch out a little bit more because we've abstracted what this face is going to look like, per se, on this new form. We've adjusted a lot. You can see the symmetry in this face is now there where if I turn this off uh, and if I turn off the eyes you can see the loss of symmetry uh, immediately. Now this is very uh, cool piece. I mean this is a very cool piece. It's very uh, very jazzy. Uh, I guess if I if I was to go to like a jazz club you know where they got they got a guy playing a a uh, piano, another guy on a trumpet, another guy on a trombone, another guy on a big upright bass, and you saw a painting on the side of the room. That is, this is kind of the thing I would see. Um, so let me go ahead and turn this back on here now, since we've built some of this form again. And I'm just going to go ahead and sketch over the top here for a little bit and start to flesh out some of all this sketching that I just did here. Uh, so let me go ahead and 
bring up my percentages to 100% on both of these. I'm going to merge them together just to make my life a little easier. So we're going to merge down. Where's merge down? Uh, merge with layer below. There we go. Now I can drop my opacity on that. So I still have my initial sketch. But now that I have that and I've kind of built myself this symmetry, now I can just have some fun. Now I know if I deviate from what I've sketched, if I deviate from my initial concept, then I need to keep in mind that it needs to be fixed on both sides. But, I mean, caricature is not about being overly analytical. Caricature is about finding um, finding a personality with your spirit. You're, you're looking through your spirit at someone else's spirit, and you're trying to find that that thing that makes it them interesting. Okay, and that's caricature. With this design, this is just someone being inspired to do something cool, and and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. More more to you, you know, more power to you. Go for it. So I mean, you don't you don't have to worry about deviating by too much. You know, if you deviate, at least you have yourself a roadblock to say, hey, you are deviating. Uh, is there something that you need to do to the other side to remove the problem of that deviation? Or is that on purpose? And if it's on purpose, great. Have fun. Um, you know, you're, you're working on just understanding what you originally created, and you're building a... You're demonstrating to yourself, basically, what the, blue, the blueprint is of this face. And I think we'll see here that as I continue to move forward on this and develop it out, it'll feel a little bit more connected. And it'll feel a bit cleaner. Okay, there we go. So we're put, pushing the muzzle out here. On that side, we'll push the muzzle out over here. And the muzzle is more or less the laugh lines here and then how it just kind of naturally flows into the chin. So it's not a a finished thing that you have to worry about so much. So now what I'm doing here is I developed out the lip coming out from the face. Okay, so that's why I've pulled, I've, I've built that shape so the lip comes out from the face. Now I'm going to connect it back with the face utilizing the shape underneath the nose. So hopefully that'll reconnect back into the face and it'll have form again. I feel like it's doing pretty well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and deviate from my plan. I'm going to pull my my bottom lip out. So I'm deviating by only enough so that when that deviation happens, I can correct it on the opposite side. And what I'm doing is I'm purposefully trying to pull it past this chin so that I have some area to have some fun with exaggeration. Okay. Now, once again, I've drawn this very circular shape over here. If I follow through the nose and I bring it back to the other side, it needs to also have that same shape and form over here. Now, you'll probably do more of that with shading than with a hard line. Uh, you'll probably shade that in there or color that in there. Uh, this artist is incredibly good at tones and values, so I would assume that he will either draw it in or shade it in. But here's the thing. Like I said, he loves lines to a fault. So if he's trying to make that person look older, a line is a better choice. If he wants to show youthfulness or wants to show a certain younger age, then he's going to have to gradient with shade to build that instead. And it depends on him. For right now, I'm just kind of going with what I saw from his initial design. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and build that ear. I mean, and if you look at the original piece, the 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 shading and the the color tone and everything is incredibly unique, incredibly interesting. Once again, you go off the eyebrows to see the top, and you go off the bottom to see the bottom. So I'd make the ear just a little bigger, probably, or I would maybe drop it down ever so slightly. But once again, that ear does connect with the line coming through the cheekbone, coming into the chin. So I'm not going to worry about changing that up too much right now. But literally, we can kind of go like that and build that back up to make that connection. I feel like I'm drawing Obama for a half a second here. Uh, now, we can go ahead and fill out the back of the head a little better. I think that the, the head form should come out a little bit wider. 
a little bit and then we can go ahead and develop the neck off of here and off of the back so personally I think that this neck is going to be just a little bit more a little bit wider before it comes down and does that connection there okay so I feel like we've definitely made some pretty intense changes uh, from the original artwork, and it's not perfect, but you can certainly see what building a, a, a understanding, a construct of what you're doing here is really going to do to the overall piece, including what that would mean for shading now that we've developed the idea that there's an awful lot more area here that's going to be hidden under the brow because the brow is literally coming out towards us. Okay, and then we're going to build it back, and you can once again just create this shape here on the front of the plane, reconnecting that form. And if you wanted to, you could even develop that brow out even further. By lifting it out, making sure making sure let me let me rewind back here a little making sure that as you're drawing this off of the central unit of that of that line that you build the brow out always planning to bring it back into center so having that knowledge there helps you build that very raised ridge and then if you're planning on taking it back in or doing what naturally seems to happen, you can rotate this like this to build that back. And we can erase the center line now and have a little bit more of some of that shape. So that really helps develop at a three-quarter perspective. Uh, it's all about just feeling what's right there and understanding if you're going to do it to one side, you're going to do it to another. And as you can tell, even with my form, I still feel like I'm off. I feel like this cheek is a little too low, and it might have spanned from when I made my adjustments with my eyes. My cheek on the right side, I think, is lower than the cheek on the left. So this is why we do this, because it helps find the dimension to help build that face back up. Once again, look at the Proco videos. Link is going to be in the description below to go check out their classes. Um, and, and seriously, that is a, a major, a major help. Uh, in the world of caricature. Uh, not that you're going to use this on every caricature you draw, especially if you're drawing live, but it, what it will absolutely do um, is it will teach you just the concept of, of trying to not look at the face as a flat. Taking a 3D face and putting it on a flat piece of paper, you're taking, uh, you're taking the face and you're trying to see it as raised and lowered 3D shapes and forms off of a face. And that's what I do love about the technique that Court Jones teaches. I think it's absolutely fantastic and totally worth, uh, totally worth uh, checking out. And it's wonderful that he has offered that trick in the caricaturist's bag of magic tricks out for everyone to try and use for themselves. I think it made a big difference in my work once I started seeing it in that light as well. Hey there, future Tim. So listen, let's go ahead and stop this video here. Uh, I think that covers everything that you need to know about the ab abstract type stuff. And seriously, go check out the Proco videos. They will give you the real, true guidance from someone who was actually taught by someone who developed this very original and beautiful technique with abstract sketching. Now, in saying that, um, please also check out my classes. Uh, being a patron at the $10 value, um, which means you're only supporting one video a month. You set how many videos you want to support at the $10 value. It's easy to do I promise uh, that's how you support me on patreon and honestly I don't use patreon the same way other people's do I use it to give you a way to support me but at the same time it's a, 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 a the door that enters you into our class uh, where you can hang out with our discord uh, community uh, where you can learn by chatting with other artists and 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 true truthfully that is really an amazing experience not only to mention that they are all there to support you and not judge you that is a humongous important thing about our community and drawing caricatures and things like that. We keep it clean, uh, we do things respectfully, and we respect each other, and we really support each other. That's the key thing. You know what? When you get that positive 
reinforcement on the hard work you've done makes you feel real good and keeps you pushing forward and that's what my community rocks at no joke so listen there's going to be a part two to this video it's a rather different twist it's going to look more at uh, trying to get this piece to show a little better but we're going to cover that in another video because that's also super long so uh stick around here uh our next video that'll come out will be that one and uh not, don't forget also february 22nd is going to be our next live class where we're going to talk a little bit more about caricature and do our classes as we've done for the past couple weeks uh past couple months we do this once a month so come and take part and then when that class is over then get involved in the community that's going to help you out a ton uh, i gotta go we'll see you guys in the next video right here on draw too much god bless you guys see ya